Good morning. How are you, brothers and sisters? It's 5.37 a.m. my time here in glorious Woodstock, Illinois. I want to talk to you about something. Some things that I recently found out about, and I shared this with a beloved brother last night in conversation. But I want to talk to you about them. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible. We're going to look at some singular verse references here, but then we're going to end up in the book of Acts. Okay? Turn in your King James Bible. Follow me along. Okay? Fritz, my cat Fritz is being rambunctious this morning. Go figure that out. Titus. Titus. Chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. Go there. In the King James Bible, the real Bible. Follow me along. These ought to be very familiar to you, but go with me. Titus chapter 2 in your King James Bible, the real Bible, verses 11 on to verse 15. We begin. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to some men. At, but wait a minute. To all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. The blessed hope. Catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Go there, please. You need to see this. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not, the Lord Jesus Christ our Father. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure, sanctification, to purify, to purify our lives. Because imagine this, Christian. What is the Lord going to catch you doing when he calls your name and we are caught up? What are you going to be caught doing? Hi, hello. By the way, what am I going to be caught doing? 
What are you going to be caught doing? Verse 3 again. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Sanctification. Through the Spirit. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that Spirit. Okay. I believe in one God, which consists of Spirit, soul, and body. Okay. So, we live a life of sanctification, which doesn't happen just like that. Certain things do, yes, but it's a process of purification. As gold is tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. That's referring, of course, onto the scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible, of course, but And every man, verse 3 again, that hath this hope in him, purifieth himself even as he is pure. Go to Matthew now, chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 1. On to verse 4. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 4. Now, this is before Christ Jesus died. Okay, this is before Christ died for sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay, doctrinally, this was the Old Testament still. Okay, Christ had not died yet. This was still under the law. Okay, Dispensationally, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, brethren. Okay? You have to, or you're going to have all kinds of problems. Trust that already several times. But let's read. Keep that in mind. Okay? Matthew 16, verses 1 on to verse 4. Of course, go there, please. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. That's the, he's making a reference to the specific generation of Jewish people that he was addressing in that verse. Okay? Instruction and in righteousness, though. Okay, let's continue. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. The uh, prophet Jonas, who was in the, be uh, the uh, belly of the fish for three days, okay? And then he got puked out onto the land, okay? He's making a reference to his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, that's where he is, by referencing that. Okay. But I want you to note verse 3. O ye hypocrites, can ye, dis ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? Now, the catching away of the body of Christ is rapidly approaching. Hello? Hi? Hello? Look around you. Look what the Jesuits are doing. Look what they have done. Okay? Look at how bad it's getting. I personally believe with all that also with several, many <laughs> brethren, that the catching away is probably going to happen sometime this year. Personally, 
I wanted to wanted it to happen a second ago, ten seconds ago, as did you, right? But we know, brethren, that it's coming. More so now today than perhaps yesterday, right? Right? Come on, nod your head. Okay, good. Okay, we know that. So, as it said in 1 John chapter 3, okay, 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, come on, get back there, Brad. Aye, aye, aye. Unbroken in Bible that whose pages are still sticking together. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. You love it. Oh, excuse me, verse 3, in 1 John chapter 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. And then we look here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 3, for instruction in righteousness. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, can ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? Catching away the body of Christ is coming rapidly. And we need to um, be sanctified. We need to sanctify our lives. You know, get rid of things and get right with the Lord, right? Now, brethren, go to the book of Acts. But hold on, because I, I, I want to I I say something here to you. Okay, go to Acts chapter 9. We're going to be in Acts chapter 9. Okay, but let me throw this at you. Think, Christian, think about this. Once upon a time, there was a live stream. And a very bold brother was behind this live stream. I'm not talking about you, Brother Bob. Love you. But once upon a time in this live stream, a brother invited the heir apparent to everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit and mine, Ed Feniger. And this individual conversed with a brother. And this individual may confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And then this individual said, quote, I believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Unquote. You caught that, didn't you, right? Right? Yeah, you caught that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Let's leave that alone. Now, what if, what if the heir apparent is actually someone who might be truly saved and just totally messed up in his doctrine? I will be honest with all of you. I do not trust that man as far as I can throw him. And it's quite simple. Let me demonstrate. I, Brad Paul Avenshine, confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Let me, let me do that again. I, Brad Paul Avenshine, confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I confess it. Enough said. But what if about the heir apparent? What if? What if? And also in a live stream, once upon a time, there was a, another individual within that live stream. And I'm going to say this as gently as possible. Um, who has some 
mental issues. Okay? This individual was on the live stream and was able to chat with several brethren. And during that time, the uh, one individual, when being asked questions, kept doing, yep, 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 yep. And unfortunately, this live stream is not available to verify, unfortunately. And to the brother who did that live stream, My heart goes to you, brother. But, okay, never mind. Okay, now, this individual who has the mental issues apparently got saved. And I listened to it. I didn't watch it because I was at work. This individual and brethren, brethren, was coached. And those of you who saw it and or listened to it, you can't deny that. He was coached along. Okay? The brethren didn't necessarily put words into his mouth, but he was coached. And unfortunately, as I said, that live stream is not available to verify, unfortunately. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that I want to get across to you. What if he truly did get saved? What if? What if? He said the right things. He was coached. He was. The brethren who were doing that, their heart was in the right place. That cannot be denied. But the individual who did have the mental issues was coached. You cannot deny that. But here's the point. What if? What if he truly did get saved? I hope so. I hope so. I have prayed for that man to truly get saved. And even for the heir apparent, I have prayed for him. Even though he uses quite a few many manipulation tactics, or did. But see, here's the thing, brethren, that I want to get across to you. What if these gentlemen truly got saved and or are saved and just messed up? Now, like I said, with the heir apparent, I don't buy it, truly. But there's always hope. And for the individual from Australia who does have some mental issues, I'm being as polite with that as I can. Um, I hope so. I really do. And see, brethren, like as we read in Matthew, okay, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 3, O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? The catching away of the body of Christ is coming very quickly. And there are those out there who are going to go to hell, who have made their choice and will not get saved. Okay? A majority of the Jesuits are like that. They have made their choice, they are serving the devil, and they're going to hell. And those that have made their choice and have yoked themselves up with the devil, Lucifer, uh, yeah, yeah, bye-bye, yeah, you can go right ahead. Would like to see you get saved, but 
there are those out there who have made their choice. There are. Okay? There are people out there who have made their choice. And personally, brethren, I don't want to see anyone go to hell. I do hope the Lord damn the Jesuit order to hell. I really do. For those who have made their choice and are in league with Lucifer, Satan. Of course, because they've made their choice. They're not going to get saved. They deserve to go where they're going. And they're going to get where they're going. Okay? But what about someone who can repent of that? Who hasn't made their choice and have their eyes open and repent of their pride, repent of themselves, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for them. And calling just happens, brethren. It just happens. As I've told you, I don't trust in my belief. I don't trust in my call. No, I trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I believe the record, the King James Bible, the real Bible, that God hath given of his Son. You know, the Word made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, okay? I believe on him. I don't trust myself. If you're truly saved and born again, neither do you. Now, you can read the book of Acts on your own time. Okay? We are going to read from verses... Oh... Let's read from verses... 10 on to verse 11, or uh, verses 10 on to verse 18 in Acts chapter 9. You can read the whole chapter on your own time, okay? But let's start here. Acts chapter 10, verse, uh, Acts chapter 9, verses 10 on to verse 18. Go there. Okay, like I said, read the context on your own time. I'm trying to make a point to you. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 on to verse 18. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Pay attention. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Saul? I, this, this guy's evil. He's, he's taking Christians to prison, getting them killed, and hence himself being kind of responsible for their death, in effect, Putting them to death? Killing them? Saul? Saul of Tarsus. Let's continue. Verse 15. But the Lord, note that, the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children and the children of Israel. Now, very quickly, the true apostles had two things in common. 
They all saw the Lord with their own eyes. Saul saw the Lord Jesus Christ with his own two eyes. Okay? And number two, the second qualification to be an apostle. The Lord personally chose them to go out. Okay? Those are the two requirements to be an apostle. As according to the scripture, as according to the Lord. Okay? For example, Barnabas was called an apostle, yes. There could have been apostles within that company other than just Paul, yes. But, as we see also in Acts chapter 2, uh, or was it, excuse me, Acts chapter 1, the apostles cho chose Matthias, whom the Lord didn't choose. And he was named among the apostles. So, there are apostles that are made by men, but then there are only 12 apostles that the Lord chose. So in, in effect, there are only 12 apostles. And the office of apostle is not effective today because the Lord chose 12. Judas hung himself and died. Okay? His replacement was Paul or Saul. Okay, had to throw that in there. Let's continue. Verse 16. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So we see in verses 13 and 14, Ananias was like, you, Saul, Saul of Tarsus, the guy who uh, was fighting you and hauled off a ton of the brethren to prison to get him killed. You want me to go to him? Verse 15, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and he arose and was baptized. Saul, Saul, of all people. Look at verse 21. Or actually, let's continue from verse 19 on to verse 21. Okay? And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed, and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? It, this is the guy who was our enemy. And now he's preaching the one whom he persecuted? No, I don't buy it. Look at verse 26. Verse 26 and verse 27. Verse 26 and verse 27. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. 
And let's continue reading verse 28. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Let's continue to verse 31 now. Okay? Are you getting this? And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So God got a hold of this murderer and made him a messenger. Saul of Tarsus. Now let me step on a few of your toes. And mine as well. Like I said, I pray the Lord destroy the Jesuit order and Roman Catholicism. Francis is going to hell, and he deserves to go there. A lot of the Jesuit order, probably about 98% of them are going to go to hell, unless they repent and get out of there before it is too late and genuinely get saved. And they're going to deserve it. And when we're up there in heaven, after we're caught up, you know, we're going to rejoice at the justice of the Lord and the righteousness of the Lord. Okay? There ain't one innocent person in hell, people. Okay? Are you praying for certain people to go to hell? Are you? I know there are a few of you that are. I pray that the Lord destroy the Jesuit order. I do. I pray for the Lord to destroy Catholicism. I do. But I also pray that a Catholic may have their eyes open and genuinely get saved and born again. I also pray that a Jew will have their eyes open and truly get saved and born again, before it is too late. I, tru I truly do. Who's the one person that you have struggle with the most to forgive, Christian? And it's not like it says, before Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Our Forgiveness, our salvation, is not predicated on whether or not we forgive someone else. Okay? I've already addressed that. But, who's the one person that you struggle the most to forgive? Let me, let me get real personal with you too now, Christian. Let me get real personal. By means of an example. Imagine uh, putting in your mind Brian Denlinger, brother Brian Denlinger. We all know that he don't like Steven Anderson that much. And Steven Anderson is going to hell. And he deserves to go there. He hates the Jews. He has replacement theology. He teaches uh, faith alone from Genesis to Revelation. And he's post-trip. Okay, and also he's non-dispensational. He is an evil, wicked, closet sodomite. Okay, he's going to hell. He's going to hell. What if, just throwing this out here, what if, what if he truly repented of himself, of his pride, of his evil, that he repented of his pride 
Because you don't repent of your sins to get saved. You repent of your self-righteousness, that you think you're good and that you can save yourself. That's biblical repentance, brethren. You repent of yourself. What if Steve Anderson did that and truly got genuinely saved and born again? What if? Are the chances of it happening likely? Probably not. I'm just saying, what if? What if? What if the Lord took one of the biggest opponents to the gospel today, here on YouTube at least? What if the Lord took one of the greatest enemies to us King James Bible believing Christians and actually saved him? What if? Could you rejoice for that? Huh? What if? Now here, let me get a uh, real personal here. What about Ed Finnegar? And uh, I personally don't really care for Ed Finnegar because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that man is a Jesuit. Brethren, Anybody who goes to 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, and will do a whole video where he says, is come, is an archaic way of saying has come, and then goes through the scriptures with that smug look on his face, like, is come means has come. It's just an archaic way of saying has come. That's not a saved man. He's a Jesuit who unfortunately, as I understand, is sick. I don't like Mr. Finnegar. I don't wish him sickness. But let me, let me just put this out here. What if the man's a Jesuit? I've no doubt about it. No doubt about it whatsoever. What if Ed Finnegar, Ed Finnegar, Think about this, Christian. Think about it. What if he got saved? Truly saved. See, both Steve Anderson and both Jesuit Edward Feniger know the truth. Why do you think they're so adamant against it? Now, like I said, are the odds of Steve Anderson truly getting saved? Uh, what are the odds on that? Well, probably not. But what if the odds on Ed Feniger truly getting saved? Well, probably not. But what if? What if they did? What if they did? Can you rejoice in that? Those two guys hate Brian Denlinger for one. Mostly Steve Anderson, but also Ed Feniger. Ed Feniger has attacked many people. Many people. Jacob Thompson, he has attacked him. He has attacked uh, Aaron Judge. Um, countless other people he has attacked. He's a Jesuit. But here's the thing, brethren. What if they truly got saved? Do I personally think that Steve Anderson and Ed Feniger are going to get saved? Truly saved? No, I do not think that. Would I like to see that? Yes. Yes. I would love to see that. Do I think it's going to happen? No. But what if it did? What if it did? Brethren, the catching away of the body of Christ is coming rapidly. And once we're out of here, this dispensation, which is the easiest to get saved, 
The hard part is getting over yourself. Once we're out of here, the time of Jacob's trouble begins. And if any man takes that mark, they're going to hell. <laughs> what if they what if they did? What if they truly did? And the evidence or fruits of repentance was there. Now, I'm not talking about liking them, okay? What if they truly got saved? You might not like them personally, but if they got saved, they would that would make them your brother, wouldn't they? If they did. Like I said, I personally don't believe either of them men are going to get saved because I truly believe they have made their choice and they're going to hell. I truly believe that. But what if they did? Is anything impossible for the Lord? And if they did, hypothetically, and the fruits of repentance were there, would you still hold a grudge? Would you still be hard in your heart about it? Would you cause strife between brethren over it? Huh? What if? What if? And knowing what's coming rapidly, what if these two evil men got saved? Steve Anderson and Ed Feniger. What if they truly did? Again, I don't think they're going to. And I oppose them both. They're both heretics. Okay? They're both heretics. They both teach evil that comes from Lucifer, Satan himself. One's a coadjutor helping the Vatican. The other one is a Jesuit. They're vile, evil men. But what if they did get saved? What if they did? What if they did? What if the one person that you as a Christian have the biggest problem with? Oh, and are you going to say, look at, look at me. Are you going to say that you don't have someone in your life like that? I call you liar. I call you a liar. What about you, Brad? Throw it back at me. Yeah. I do have people I have problems with. I do. But what if they got saved? <laughs> what if the manager of my job truly got saved? Truly got saved. I'd be the first one there as a Barnabas. Think about this, brethren, with what is coming. Now, again, like I said, about a certain live stream that happened a long time ago, um, it's unfortunate that that got taken down. Um, but there again, the possibility, the idea that two men who are true enemies of the true gospel to truly get saved. How can that thought as a Christian, as a King James Bible believing Christian, how could that not 
Let the appetite so to say. I, d I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I really don't. So, like I said, I don't for one second think that Steve Anderson or Ed Feniger are going to get saved. They're going to hell. And they deserve to go there. And also about Ed Feniger, the Jesuit, who I don't particularly like at all. As I understand, he is sick, and I don't wish that sickness upon him. I really don't. You can go ahead and call me a sissy all day, boy. I don't care. You know why I'm like this? Because I was on that path to hell. I know what I got saved from, and I know who saved me. What about you? Have you forgotten from whence you came that you can't have mercy on other people if they truly get saved? <laughs> I'd almost challenge all of you to uh, pick the greatest enemy that you know of, of the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and those who claim to be King James Bible-believing Christians, but yet teach contrary to this book. Make them a target of your prayer. Because what if like Brother Jeff Allen said, what if? And incidentally, to Brother Jeff Allen, thank you. Thank you. Your comment, which I got the notification for, really stirred me. Thank you. Thank you. Think about this, Christian. Think about it. Gotta go. I love you. Bye-bye.